Welcome Ape Army, Ape Factory here. This one's going to go pretty fast, so pay attention. We're looking at removing and replacing the OEM style battery, including how to code it using the Rostec VCDS. If you don't know what that is, Google is your friend. Needless to say, it should be the first mod you purchase before any other. In the long run, it will save you a ton of money. At the end of the show, we'll have a short but extremely interesting interview with Andrew, who's a fellow RS5 enthusiast from Alberta, Canada. Today we're swapping OEM style batteries, including those found at major auto parts stores. There is no need to go to the dealer as long as the battery is listed as an original equipment fitment. Even if it isn't, there are workarounds when it comes time to code the battery in. Coding the battery simply means you let the computer know the amp hours and the type of battery you're installing. The car comes with an active battery system and charges it based on its use as well as the type of battery installed. AGM batteries are charged differently than regular lead acid batteries. AGM stands for absorbent glass mat. For equipment, you'll only need a few items, a 13 millimeter socket, an extension, a ratchet, in addition to a 10 millimeter wrench and opposable thumbs. One warning, the original battery can be quite heavy, upwards of 60 pounds. If you have any doubts about lifting it out on your own, get someone to help. I prefer no one get injured. Remove the battery cover by turning the large lockdown nut to the left. Lift off the plastic cover along with the attached air compressor. They'll come off as one piece. Lift off the foam accessory tray and the attached tools as one piece as well. Using your 13 millimeter socket, loosen the three bolts closest to you. With your 10 millimeter box wrench, loosen the nut on the negative battery terminal before lifting it off the battery's negative pole. Next, remove the battery management ECU, which is clipped into a plastic bracket. Simply press on the tabs and the ECU can be removed. Handle it gingerly and don't bring it in contact with the negative battery terminal. With the ECU removed, you can then slide the plastic bracket off the large U-shaped battery bracket. Depress the tabs and it'll slide up and off. This exposes the last two 13mm bolts on the back side. Remove those and lift out the battery bracket. Remove the vent tube from the side of the battery. Moving on to the positive terminal, lift up on the flap to expose the 10mm bolt. Loosen the bolt and pull it off. Note the plastic flap detaches from the old battery and is transferred onto the new battery. Don't lose it and don't forget to install it. Reinstallation is the reverse of removal. Start with a positive terminal and secure it using your 10 mm box wrench. Do not crank the nut and really tighten the terminal down. Snug is good enough. Plug the vent tube back into the side of the battery and replace the large plastic battery cover. Lay the battery's tie down bracket and line up the bolt hole as well as the notch with one in the battery's side. Move the battery to the left or to the right to align it properly. Insert the battery's accessory bracket over the top, making sure the wires on the back side are inboard of the bracket. Loosely insert all the bolts on both the front and the back side. Secure them with a 13 mm socket. Slide the ECU bracket back onto the battery's accessory bracket and then mount the ECU in place. It simply clips right in, but it may take a bit of fidgeting. Don't force it.
attach the negative side lead and snug it down. The foam accessory tray goes in next, followed by the cover. Using the large nut, spin it clockwise to lock everything down. Replace the trunk carpeting and congratulate yourself on a job half done. Now we enter the mysterious world of coating. Depending on the brand of battery you have, it may come with what's referred to as a BEM sticker. That sticker will have the necessary product and individual battery serial number to coat it into the car. This is the BEM sticker from my car's original battery, as in 7 year old battery. It died from old age and not being driven. Because it died, I'm using a slightly different battery and the new one needs to be coated in. Little tech tip, please be sure to snap a photo of your old battery's BEM sticker and save it for future posterity. Looking at the BEM sticker, the serial number starting with the 8K0 is the product's serial number. All the batteries from this supplier and in this same size will have this same number. It tells the computer the make, type of battery, and its amp hours. Below that, you'll see a serial number which begins with MLA. It is the serial number for this particular battery and it is a unique number. MLA represents the battery maker's code. If you are not using an OEM replacement battery specified by the manufacturer, you may have no BEM sticker. You can fudge the second serial number assuming the battery is of the same size and type as the old one, but more on that later. If you don't have a VCDS, it is a very powerful and fairly easy to use OBD2 interface. It allows you to do all sorts of really cool things from read and clear codes, advanced diagnostics, code in comfort features the dealer wants you to pay for, and even log every sensor and parameter on your particular vehicle. It is literally worth its weight in gold. There's even a forum to go share your troubles with other owners and techies alike. If you only have one Audi vehicle, the three license version should be good enough. You can always purchase additional licenses later if need be. This will allow you to service three cars with three different serial numbers. Note, you will also need a Windows-based PC laptop. As I mentioned, it does all kinds of neat stuff and can even give you a glimmer into your battery's health. I purchased a direct fit OEM replacement battery made by Autocraft it did not have a BEM sticker. We're going to jump a bit ahead here, but this will save you some hassle down the line. Autocraft batteries are made by a company called Johnson Control. Since they are an approved OEM replacement, they have their own code. This menu will pop up when you begin to code in the new battery. Note the different manufacturers all have a different code. Assuming you have used the VCDS in the past, Launch the program on your PC laptop with the cable connected to the OBD2 port under the dash. Turn on the accessory ignition. The car's power should be on, but the engine should not be running. On the program's home screen, top left, you'll see select control module and the big select button. Click it. In the new window, look for 19-CAN gateway and click it. That's the CAN gateway. A new window will open up and it'll take a second for all the coding to load. Once it does load, look for long adaptation 0A on the right and click it. Again, a new window will open. There's a pull down menu which is labeled Documented Ad Adaptation Channels. Click on the right side and the drop down menu appears. From there, select Battery Information Replacement. A new window will appear and the stored value window will propagate with a BEM code. Take note of the number of numbers and letters for each serial number as well as the battery's three letter code in the middle. Enter the new serial numbers for both the battery type as well as the individual battery serial number separated by the manufacturer's three letter code. If your code for both is 10 digits long, you'll need a space between them as pictured. The system is designed to take an 11 digit code in both positions. Looking at my battery's label, there was no BEM code. I did notice a 10 digit serial number underneath the battery's barcode. Not a coincidence. 
Additionally, looking around the battery's casing, I notice another 11 digit code, definitely sensing a pattern here. Here's what my code would look like, noting the space between the 7 and the J as the first serial number is only 10 digits long. You'll enter that combination serial number into the box labeled New Value. Take a photo with your phone and then hit the test button on the left. If the code is accepted, the stored value will change. If it is not accepted, it will pop up a warning and you'll have to re-enter or fudge around with the numbers and spacing. Push comes to shove, you can use the old serial number and change a digit on the second specific to your battery serial number and it will likely be accepted. Just make sure you're using the exact same type of battery, either lead acid or AGM. I'll have a second battery related video out shortly where we install a state of the art anti-gravity lithium ion battery and shed a ton of weight in the process, so stay tuned. My apologies go out to Andrew, we simply ran out of time, but we'll be sure to have him back. Thanks for watching, stay safe, Ape Factory out.